Hello, it's Scott Manley here doing something slightly different today because, of course, I've done a lot of videos in front of this backdrop. It's just a bunch of shelves with a bunch of random stuff. Honestly, I deliberately put up the shelves there so that I could do this. The backgrounds are always either my record collection or some other stuff, but everyone always says, what the heck have you got behind there? What is that random spaceship? Why is it there? Well, there are a lot of spaceships. There are a lot of other things. And I want to kind of go through the bits and pieces that I have here. So we're going to zoom in here and actually get in close. So let's start over on the left hand side of the bottom shelf. This is a, a piece of fan art, which was a yarn art gave this to me. This is, blows my mind. It's basically all a bunch of yarn all wrapped together. It's me as a Kerbal. This is Scott Kerman. You can tell it's me because of the beer and because I wear my headphones on one ear. Just kind of a reflex from when I was DJing and I would always do it. It also has a Scott Manley written on the back there. There are three other Kerbals here, 3D printed. We have Scott Kerman, which was sent to me just recently by the squad team. This is Valentina and this is uh, Jeb, of course, this is the first generation of uh, 3D printed stuff from Shapeway. Now, this uh, dragon here, this is actually one of the test prints that comes with my 3D printer, which uh, I'm just going to point out, yeah, sits over here. This is a Prusa Mark III, and it is a lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff, but I am still so much learning it, so uh, my prints are bad. That picture there, incidentally, was from TwitchCon last year. That's the me and the science happy hour crew wearing, uh, of course, my goggles and all that. Okay, so the cool stuff. Let's continue with the cool stuff. Uh, Doctor Who sonic screwdriver. Uh, 3D printed uh, uh, Vesta. TwitchCon thing. Patches. This is pretty cool. Okay, so last year I talked at a conference about basically building starships. And uh, Miguel Alcubier was there. And uh, I got a signed mug by Mr. Warp Drive himself, and I almost dropped my asteroid on the Earth, which of course we know would be really dangerous. Yeah, a couple of robots that I occasionally experiment with. This is like second gen Lego NXT. This is a maker bot or M bot, make block thing. Great for the kids. I think this is better value for money than the Lego, but it's a lot easier to get kids to play with Lego. Commander video figure, because, I don't know, I like it. Um, yeah, going up a shelf, we actually can just about see here, there's a, one of these Ninkasi. On the second shelf, I have the two different versions of ground control. So there's th been three generations of ground control beer, which are essentially beers that have been made with yeast, which was flown in space in a suborbital flight. It's a you know, different every year, but it's definitely really potent stuff and not cheap, but absolutely worth digging out. We have the Lego Women of NASA set, which, uh, of course, you know, Margaret Hamilton, Mae Jemison, Sally Ride, Nancy Roman, but I mean, I think Margaret Hamilton is the one that I like best because I've dug into the code on the Apollo Guidance computer. If you've seen my video on Apollo 14, you might find out a bit about, a bit about it. Anyway, this spaceship here, a lot of people ask me about this. What is that spaceship? That is from Star Wars. But specifically, this is a Gozante class Imperial light carrier. I think that's a technical term. But if you look at the base here, it's actually designed for a board game, a tabletop miniatures game called X-Wing uh, Miniatures Game. And it's by Fantasy Flight Games, and it's hugely popular. And if I just skip over behind me, we actually have <laughs> the rest of my models here. Yeah, look, this is my Rebel collection with some Y-Wings, X-Wings, B-Wings. Actually, there's no Y-Wings there because I ran out of space on my Lego shelf and I had to put the Rebel Y-Wing along with this scum and villainy Y-Wing. There's three Z-95 headhunters, a Hawk, whatever, Slave 1. And then on the Imperials, you've got lots and lots of different TIE Fighters here, including some in alternate colors because they are like the elite, um, you know, Emperor's Royal Guard and all that. And then we've got the red TIE Defender. Yeah, we all, the U-Wing there, incidentally, the wings will move. That's the one on the right. We have a... Um, a YT-1300 as well from Shadow of the Empire. Now below this, sometimes you'll see some of these spaceships on the 
on the screen in the background because I'll swap these out because depend what I like. That of course is an Imperial Star Destroyer. That is for a different tabletop game called Star Wars Armada. It's a uh, pretty pricey, but yeah, you get to move spaceships around around a battlefield and blow each other up. There's a couple of Victory class destroyers and an interdictor. And then we get into rebel territory. We've got a couple of uh, rebel, two different, the Liberty and uh, the other one. You see there's a flotilla of GR-75s there. Going down further still, you know, assault frigates and torpedo frigates and Nebulan B frigates there. And of course, squadrons of fighters. Going all the way down, you've got the CR-90s, and down to the bottom, there's more Imperial ships there, including a Gladiator-class Star Destroyer, an Architens-class, and an Imperial Raider. Yeah, um, I have a bit of a problem when it comes to miniature war games involving spaceships. I think, you know, if I just look over here in this closet here, yep, um... Piles of stuff, including unopened packets of things which I shall probably use at some point. Yes, these fighter packs at the back, yeah, those are hard to find right now. But yes, yeah, spare Imperial Star Destroyer in my closet because I'm a spaceship nerd. Okay, back to the shelves. Okay, so where were we? Yes, we had the spaceship. This big circular thing in the middle is one of my favorite items here. This is a wooden astrolabe. I did a whole video on these things. Though I'll link the video, but those are essentially clones of ancient astronomical instruments which you can use to determine the time of sunrise, look altitude, location of stars in the sky. Uh, you can use it to determine times. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. This uh, grey spaceship in the middle is obviously a 3D printed version of the Gunstar from uh, The Last Starfighter. And everyone recognises this as the Rifter from EVE Online. This was, a, oh, this was obviously an iconic spacecraft. But this one has an extra secret. If you turn around to the rear, it has USB ports because this is actually a USB hub and the engines light up when you plug it in. This came with the EVE Online Premium div, uh, Edition or something, which I ended up buying using Plex. So it, I essentially got it for free because I made enough money in the game. I have some meteorite samples down here just because, you know, why not? Actually, one of these might be a fossil. Uh, plush Jeb. And this uh, little foam space shuttle that was really early in the Kerbal development that that came out that's really starting to go yellow and there's a that's a USB stick that surviving Mars thing yep and obviously on the top row we have my Lego Saturn 5 which is easily the best Lego kit I have ever had the pleasure of building I don't really build Lego that often anymore but man if you can get it that is fantastic I do actually have another Saturn V here, but the painting on it has been done by a complete numpty, that is me, and I managed to lose the command capsule and this fell off as I was preparing this video, so I'm really having a problem with it. <laughs> um, yeah, that might have to be retired at some point. Got a microscope though, I occasionally use that, and uh, yeah, there's some slides and stuff. Arduino kit. This isn't on display. This just happens to be sitting here. But I will point out that this, this is pretty special. So about 20 years ago, um, Anne, through mutual contacts, ended up enlisting my help to help uh, drop an asteroid on Pern. And so this is one of 20 signed copies of the last Pern book that she ever, uh, you know, that she worked on. So yeah, we got maps in here. Where is it? Where's the? There it is. Here we go. This leather-bound edition of the Skies of Pern is limited in this state to twenty copies. This is copy number three, presented to Scott Manley, CIC. That's Cosmic Impact Consultant, by the author Anne McCaffrey. This book has been bound by Antiquarian Root, uh, Bookmark, whatever. So yeah, that is the final one. And in the middle, actually, there is a map which uh, has the impact point of the asteroid and everything all figured out on it with the, you know, the way the, you know, basically the way the, the waves would have flown and moved and everything. I actually did 
3D models of the solar of the Pern solar system, figured out where the object would have come from. I convinced her that it had to be a comet because it would look better, and you know we ended up going with that. Also, a lot of these books here are just like they're there, like they weren't planned to be there. But there's a few cool things here. First of all. Shenzhen Longteng Electronics Company Limited. This is, of course, the manual uh, for the game Shenzhen IO, which is an absolutely fabulous experience that will make you hate programming. But it's a lot of, a lot of really good stuff here. We have the Kerbal Player's Guide, which, of course, uh, I uh, wrote some blurbs for and everything. Well, let me see what else. Oh, yeah. Applied Cryptography, fantastic book that everybody that's interested in you know, computer security should learn about. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, Ian Banks, great. History of DJs, but it's out of date. Astrophysical Techniques, this is great. This is from like the mid early 90s, and I learned all about my astronomical uh, instrumentation from it. But what is fascinating to look at it these days, because it has a huge section on CCDs, that is image sensors, and in it they talk about the highest resolution CCD being 64 by 64. And uh, that really dates it, because of course now we've got you know, 64 million pixels in four, right? It's ridiculous. Numerical recipes in C is... In the days before the internet, this was a great way to come up with numerical algorithms for like solving equations and stuff like that. What I find fun about this, uh, obviously I programmed C, that was my choice, but it was originally written in Fortran. And if you know C, the indexes of the arrays all start at zero, but in Fortran they start at one. And when they ported the code from Fortran to C, they included a library that would allocate all their arrays so that the indexes would start at one, so they didn't have to change their algorithms. It was one of the weirdest things I've encountered in coding C, but hey, you know, um, whatever. Let's see what else we've got. A uh, few other bits and pieces here. Yeah, Cuckoo's Egg. That's, that was an astronomer that did, you know, hacky stuff kind of a good read still these days I think. This was uh, something I've meant to do a little talk about. This is the STS-34 press information. That was where they launched the Galileo spacecraft on its mission to Jupiter. This was found by like one of my neighbours and he was like, hey, you should dig this. You should talk about it. I'm like, sure. Sure, I'll talk about it. Uh, another couple of random things here. Hazards due to asteroids. This was a book of basically it was a concert um, conference proceedings it's fantastic it's got all sorts of crazy stuff for saving the world from killer asteroids orbital motion by archie roy he was the he was just retiring as i arrived at glasgow university but i had a lot of uh you know i, I talked with him a lot he so i learned a lot of orbital mechanics from him I ended up going to italy to one of his conferences and being you know convinced to sing in a glee club yeah, that was an interesting night. Also a great book. This one, still a valid, awesome textbook. Not sure what else. There's a bunch of other stuff sitting around here. But yeah, uh, that is what I have in the background. Now, if you have any more questions, I'm sure, you know, I'm going to say Ian Banks. Anything about Ian Banks? Sci-fi? Absolutely worth reading. Yes. So, hopefully that has satiated your appetite a little. It's obviously very <laughs> it's obviously a very limited tour. I could tell you stories about a lot of these things and there are linked videos that cover a lot of this. Um, so yeah, when you're seeing stuff in the background, you all know that it has a reason for being there and the reason is to get you guys to ask, what is that in the background? I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Mm -hmm.